comment, subscribe, see more dino content. If you like the dino content, let us know. Don't wait any longer. Like, comment, and subscribe. Give us a comment, interact with our page, we love it. A lot of people in Southeast Queensland probably actually know this car. It's been around for quite a few years. I have memories of this car uh, back when I first started getting into cars out of school in like 2018, 2019. The downshift circuit and coffee was like a big, that was like the big thing at the time for car people. You'd go down like first thing on a Saturday morning at like 6 a.m. and you do laps of QR and then you'd have breakfast afterwards. This car was one of like the banner cars that they posted up that like to draw people in. It was like Zeus is coming. It was, uh, I think it was like 800 horsepower power glide. Like that was the, that was their draw card back then. So this thing has been around for a hot minute. I'm sure plenty of people know it. It's a forged RB2630, it's a really popular combo. Uh, anybody who knows RBs knows of the 2630 that you can build for them. It's got a two-speed power glide, uh, some really big tires <laughs> under the back end of it. Uh, it's, it's got a lot of the tools to make it go fast, so today we're gonna put it on the dyno, as we already have, and we're going to give it a roll racing orientated tune. So we're trying a bit of a different video style, so we're gonna try and bring you along with this. We haven't really done a, uh, a dyno tuning video thus far, so we're gonna try and bring you along with us, give you a bit of insight, um, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see what it can make. As with all great stories, to proceed, first, we must go back. How far back? To when we put it on the dyno the first time. <laughs> New shoes, that's to the start. Ooh, to the start. Well, before the start. As with all good stories, they've got... There's got to be a start. There's, there's, as with all good stories, they've got, a, they've got a middle, an end, and they've also got a beginning. And currently, you're actually in the middle. Because this isn't the real beginning. The real beginning was a few weeks ago. So let's go, let's go back there. We tried to tune it. We started, started the whole process of actually tuning it. Um, what we initially tried to do was basically just run it up the way that it was to get a baseline of where the car's at. What we found was that the converter was just absolutely slipping. That's not the word that I was gonna use, but pretty much what we had was we had a lot of RPM and decent boost and zero wheel speed. It just wasn't transferring the uh, engine RPM through to the gearbox essentially, which is, a, it's what a converter is meant to do. That's the job of the converter. So yeah, pretty much TC has said, this thing's a toast. Uh, we can't fix it, it's not worth fixing, we'll just give you a new one. We gave them the specs, told them what we want, they've been pretty good with every other car that we've done. We said, hey, this is what we've got, makes this much power, or we wanna make this much power, we wanna do this with it. They sent us a converter, and uh, that's what they've done. So that converter is now in the car, gearbox is back in, fresh fluids through it. So we are going to run this thing back up on the dyno again and give it a tune. I believe this car has supposedly made uh, 7, 750, 800, somewhere around there between 7 and 800, I think is the, what I've seen uh, advertised. That's probably not the right word, but I'm pretty sure that's what this thing's made. So uh, whether or not we get to that same number again today is sort of dependent on how the car behaves. If it wants to make that power, it'll make that power. If it doesn't want to make that power, we're not, we're not going to be able to force it. But this is the converter. We don't actually know. I ain't no but converter guy. I'm pretty sure these are supposed to be like that, complete. So that is, I think, a lot of the problem. Uh, the outer fins, I guess you call them, obviously. Bent. Bent as well, so it looks like the, you open up to let the trans break up, but. We're still learning this side of things as well. I think that those missing bits and then those bits that are cracked and torn away is how it's meant to be. That looks completely fine to me. That's how we thought it was gonna be. So hopefully it's holding more power, transfers the power through what the actual engine's doing. Yeah, it's driver. not so much about making more power, but actually transferring the power to the, to the drive line. Um, so, yeah, whether it makes the same power, like I said, I think it was 750, 800, but whether or not that's the case of the number that we get, uh, a lot of people do get a little bit disappointed when their car makes sort of X amount of power on another dyno and then you put it on a, I think mainlines are notoriously harsh on power numbers, whether they're harsh and they make less or whether they're more accurate. So we, up here, we're 587 metres above sea level. 
um, which I think probably attributes to a little bit of the power I guess we lose, like Sam was saying. Um, every time we have a current our dyno, it seems to be a little bit less than what it was on someone else's dyno. Um, and I think we attribute that to the sea level. Um, we're you know, quite high, so. But we'll see. Well, like Sam said, it's not, a, it's not about a power gain in this car. It's just about getting this car delivered, um, de to deliver the power that it's supposed to have. Um, if we can just get that 758 under horsepower, it'd be fantastic. But if it's, again, butt dynos tell a lot of the story. Yeah. When you go racing, it's, you can see how fast the car is just by, you know, it might make 700 horsepower, but if it beats a 1,000 horsepower car that someone else has, you know, sort of proof of the pudding sort of thing, so. You rat bastard. That's like finding your timing light next time. Yeah, well, if somebody didn't put it in the wrong, the wrong freaking drawer. Well, if you put it where I put it, I'd know where it is. It doesn't count if you put it away in the wrong spot. If you put it away in the wrong spot, you may as well have left it out. You can't change my mind. Step one, before we do any sort of tune, uh, before we do any, uh, what, how, how would you say it? How would you say it? How would you say it? I don't know. Step, step one, first things first is to check base timing on your engine. It's very, very important. Even if you're not putting it on a dyno, even if you're just putting your engine back in or you've just had it out or you've changed your timing about it, you've done anything, you've done anything remotely related to timing, or you want to go and th thrash it. That probably doesn't really relate to the people at home. Anyway, look, moral of the story is step one is check base timing on your engine. If you don't check base timing on your engine, uh, we go into the ECU and we say, we want 18 degrees timing advance, okay? And our base timing is not zero. Say our base timing is five degrees advanced already. That means instead of getting our 18 degrees, we're actually getting 23, which is a surefire way to put some uh, unadulterated spice into your engine, <laughs> okay? So what we do, we got our timing light hooked up here. We're gonna start the engine up. We'll check base timing. We'll check for 20 degrees. We'll check for zero to make sure that across the range it's not doing anything weird. So pretty much if we command 20 degrees in the ECU, I'm looking to see 20 degrees uh, on our timing light down here on the balancer. Same thing if we look for zero on the ECU, I wanna see zero here. Once we've confirmed that, we know that the numbers we put in the ECU match what's actually going into the engine. Uh, that way you don't end up melting things accidentally. You might melt them on purpose, but it won't happen accidentally. So step one, we'll do that once Stu's finished playing with the computer. We'll get him started up and we will look for 20 degrees. 20 degrees, please, sir. So what we're looking for is down here on our timing mark on our balancer and the timing mark on the timing cover. And once Stu locks it at 20 degrees, we should see those marks line up, which he has not done yet. We are still waiting. We are still waiting. We are still waiting. It's been 84 years. Can you see it? I don't think you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. We're just gonna get a baseline, basically, uh, last time we tried this, the converter was slipping, so we're just gonna do the baseline for what was actually um, in the ECU, other than the timing which we just corrected on the engine um, and the ECU side now. Um, we're gonna get a baseline and see where it's actually at. Um, it's in closed loop boost control, which we predominantly use open loop, but um, we'll just see where this goes to and see how it reacts and see what it's at. And we'll give you an update after that. My PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so if we look on, if you look on the left side of the screen here, we see the arrow. Can you see that, Dylan? You see this? Yeah. So the blue line is the dyno run that we did on the old converter. The green line is the new converter. Um, so it did make it made 648 last time. It made 610 just then, but it also made that on like six pound of boost less. So we're 40 horsepower for six pound of boost. It's, that's good going. So pretty much the things to look at here is how much earlier the green line, which is the current converter, the new converter comes on. So basically we're coming on a lot earlier and then we are holding our power out for a lot longer as well. It's, it's not a perfect representation because the RPM dropped out on the first dyno run. So, but what you can see is basically the downward trend of the blue line. What that is, is basically our converter becoming less efficient as RPM goes up. 
whereas the green line, the current converter, our efficiency of our converter is going up as RPM increases. And then when it starts to flatten off here, that's essentially our converter locking up. I've said essentially a lot. That is our converter locking up. And then right at the end of our run here at 7,200 RPM or whatever we got to, we're at 93% efficiency. So basically it means we are transferring 93% of what the engine is putting out to the gearbox or to the rear wheels in this case. In a perfect world, at a certain RPM, your converter would go to 100%, which is what a lockup converter is. Um, this is not a lockup converter. It's just a, uh, I don't know, what's, the, what's not a lockup converter? A converter? Lock converter. Not a lockup converter. <laughs> it's a not a lockup converter. Thanks, Dane. Um, so, non lockup. Yeah, non lockup converter. Sorry. <laughs> So the fact that we're getting up sort of towards the top of our run, that we're actually getting close to that 100, 93%, that's pretty good. We're, we're pretty happy with that. Basically, that means once we get into RPM, we've got boost and we've got RPM and our converter starts to lock up. What that means is we're going to get wheel speed, which is how you actually make the car fast. Previously, the car was getting boost and it was getting RPM and then there was, it wasn't getting wheel speed. So it'd scream and make a lot of noise and it just wouldn't go anywhere. It'd just scream and make a lot of noise. Now it'll scream, make a lot of noise and it will actually get some road speed. Um, so the other thing is, if you look at, so this is, as Stewie said before, we're still in closed loop at the moment, uh, closed loop boost control. So you can see the power sort of comes up and then it gets this little hump in the middle here. That is because our boost also does that. So it comes along at 21 pound and then the closed loop, uh, because this tune up was meant to make closer to 30 pound because the older converter was looser, it had more RPM at different points in time. So the closed loop is basically trying to add more boost to get to that boost level it thinks it's meant to be at. That's a really dumbed down way to explain it, but that's what's happening. And basically it's, it's spiking the boost there and then bringing it back down. So that's why our power is going up and down and up and down. So it meant to be 27 pound, but it's getting to, it's just, dying like gets to 27 pound and then just cuts it's like it's got an ecu cut or a boost cut or something uh put it onto setting two do the run and it's fine so it's it's got to be a there's got to be like a boost cut or a traction control cut or something just stopping it so we're going to look at that stewie's going to look at that he's going to find said cut turn it off moon tune not actually but that's what I'd do, and that's why I'm not allowed the laptop. <laughs> that's why you were just in the drive. So. That's why I just drive the car, because Stewie doesn't fit. What is my purpose? <laughs> my purpose is drive the car, look at the lines, make sure they go the right way. And when they don't, you tell Stewie. And, and when they don't, them. I say, fix it! <laughs> Boost line go up, fuel line come down, all good. This is 29 pound roughly. Uh, we figured out what the cut was. It was essentially, it was just a boost cut. Um, the links have some of their tables set up as uh, basically, I'm doing too many things at once here. Um, basically you have to take 14.7, you have to take the uh, atmospheric pressure off the top of it. So we had our boost cut set at 40 pound, but it was actually 26. So uh, we got the boost cut raised now. Uh, we should do a little half run and it looked pretty good. So we'll do a full run now and see how we go. Spicy little 705. Fueling got a bit rich at the end there. It's the only real reason I got out of it. Power started to fall over because of that, but boost is nice and flat. All right, so blue line is the old converter, the old destroyed converter, and uh, purple line is the new one here. So same again, you can see it's coming on a bit earlier, but that's a you can't really pay too much attention to that because start speeds and all that sort of stuff, it varies a little bit. But if you go to where you sort of at similar boost, so over here on the right hand side, Dylan, you see that, we're at very comparable boost, 27.1 uh, and 27.3, it's nearly identical, and then you come back to our power, so we are making 624 horsepower now, where he was previously making under 300, 289, so we're more than 300 horsepower up from where it was at the same, um, the same boost level essentially. So if I've got RPM on here, I might even be able to show you more, which I don't, it's, it, didn't draw, it didn't read, but 
That is what it is. But basically at the same boost level, at the same point in a dyno run, we're um, 300 horsepower up. So that's good. That's good going, isn't it? It's good going. It means we got a lot more power a lot earlier. Power under the curve is what you're looking for, Dylan. Did you know, have you heard of that saying? Power under the curve. Do you know what that means? It feels like a mathematical term. Would you like to explain it to the people? Um, no, I wouldn't. Power under the curve is basically, if you look at the dyno screen, this is, our, this is our curve, this is what we refer to as the curve, and power under the curve is all of this area over here. So if you've got a lot of area under the curve, that means you've got a lot of power under the curve, which means you've got a fast car. If your, if your dyno graph went more like along the bottom here and then all of a sudden it came up, say like G-Ups does, <laughs> G-Up doesn't have a lot of power under the curve. Right. Makes a lot of power, but it's not not a uh, not a fast roll racing car. So this is a this is a very good roll racing curve. Basically, early power and a and a long long power curve. So it holds the power well, and it's reacting well to boost. So um, I think Stewie's just going to ring. I think Stewie's going to ring the customer now and see sort of how far he wants to take it, where he wants to go with it. Um, reacted well to the boost. So if you wanted to put more boost in it, and make more power, you definitely could. Uh, or he may decide, based on that information there on the screen, that he might just want to drive it at 700 horsepower and decide from there if he if he actually needs more. But I guarantee you, go and drive this car now versus what what car he brought to us. It's a it's completely different. So it's going places now. It's gonna go, not just scream. It's gonna go. It's gonna go. Let's go have some. Let's go have some uh, ham and cheese sandwiches. Stewie rang the customer and he said, hey, you went 705 on 28 pound, are you happy with that? And he said, nah, put some more in it. And he said, okay, what do you want to put in it? And he said, 35 pound. So we're going to 35 pound. Uh, we're at 705 on 28, we should, we'll, we'll get close to 800. Uh, I think with, with a bit of tidy up the fueling and stuff like that, I reckon we should, we should crack over 800, but we'll see if it, you right? Yeah. We'll see, we should get there, we'll see. Put your comments, put a guess right now. So it went 7.05 on 28.4 pound of boost, right? We're gonna go for 35 pound. So what power is it gonna make on 35 pound? Is the, that's the question. Put it in the comments. Huh? My guess, I think if we get 35 pound, I think this run will probably be like 780, 7.87. With some fueling, we'll crack 800. That's what I, that's my guess. That's if it goes 35 pound. It might not. It might go a little bit less, a little bit more. We'll see. I'm gonna say 750. 750. 45 extra horsepower. <laughs> I'll just hold it a bit longer so that you're wrong. <laughs> You said 750, didn't you? Like man, man, man. I'm talking to Dylan. Asshole. Get out of my fucking face. <laughs> Big car guy. Big car guy. Well, you win. I win. <laughs> Ended up with 743 horsepower on that last run at 34 pound it peaked at. So Dylan was the winner. Man behind the camera, big car guy, knows a lot about cars. Got the, got the closest. Uh, that probably is a bit of a bad look for us, but that's all right. I wasn't too far off. I said 787, 743. It's just Dylan guessed closer. So 743 at 34 pound, and we have pretty much reached the limit of the fuel system. We are approaching the limit of the injectors, and we we're also starting to see some small wobble in the fuel pressure. So it's not worth pushing this thing any further and then fudging numbers to make it. It's, it's not. This is where the car wants to make power. That's the power it wants to make. That's, that's it, basically. Um, the car is always gonna tell you what power it wants to make. So, for example, at 709 horsepower, actually, where's my keyboard? I'll show you. So, this, this is sort of how, this is how we can tell that your car is essentially running out of its efficiency range, or it's not in its efficiency range. So, at 709 horsepower, we were at 28 pound of boost, right? So, 
We then put extra boost in it, so we were at 34 pound here in this top run. So six pound of boost extra, and we've only gained, uh, what, 30 horsepower. So those aren't great gains for the extra boost. Obviously, you gotta take into account heat soak and stuff like that, but basically, as soon as you start chasing power and the power just isn't coming, if that makes sense. So we put six extra pound of boost and we've only gained 30 horsepower. That's not a big increase for that amount of boost. So pretty much it means that this engine is no longer being efficient. It's no longer within its efficiency range and you're just starting to stress things that don't want to be stressed. So things like fuel system, things like turbos, things like camshaft um, profiles and all that sort of stuff. So. Basically, the smart move to do is leave the car here. It's happy, everything looks fine, the data's good. We're not completely out of injector, we're not out of fuel pump, anything like that. So everything's still safe and everything's still working. It's just, if we were to try and put more boost in this, we're basically putting more boost, more heat, more stress on the engine for very little gain. So we're gonna leave it here, we're gonna give it back to the customer and he uh, is a bit of a roll racing regular. So I'm sure if you head down to a roll racing event soon, you'll probably see him out there. Uh, if you are interested in roll racing content, we will be back at the roll racing events very shortly, so make sure you subscribe. You'll see those videos when they come out. And if you enjoyed this sort of dyno style, slightly, slightly more in-depth type of video, um, leave it down in the comments below, let us know, feedback, sort of tell... Look at me. What? He's so much better than this than I am. <laughs> If you enjoy this kind of video and it's something you want to see more of, give us a bit of feedback. We don't mind taking the time out to film it, to, to film things that you want to see. Um, so yeah, let us know if you enjoyed it and we'll do more of this style of stuff. But like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. See you next time. See you next time. Ludicrous, really. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit uh, silly, really. But it's what happens when you order the fucking Uber fast. <laughs>